the corner on. Okay. All right. <coughs> I can actually put about 18 hours on a flash oh. card in here. Oh, I, oh. So I can put a whole bunch of interviews on it. Cooperative Legacy Project interview number 42. June 28th, 2006, we're visiting with Elmo King, former manager of the Lemon Equity Exchange. Right. Yeah. Elmo, where and when were you born? I was born in uh, uh, August 20th, 1918, in Lemon, South Dakota, right south of Lemon, in a uh, sod house. That wasn't all that long after it was settled around here, was it? Well, my folks came to South Dakota from Iowa in 1916, uh, I think. Okay. They came in a covered wagon. Oh, they did. So they came up here in a covered wagon? Yeah. Wow. They, I think it took them about seven weeks or something to come from uh, southern Iowa. Was that uh, common for the folks who settled up here? What's that? Was that common for the folks to settle? Well, they had. There was. There was some of the relatives that lived here, and I don't oh, okay. know. I guess my folks just took off for Dakota. That's okay. A, that was be, a little before, a couple of years before I was born, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Before Iowa, where, were, where was your family originally from? They, they lived at. Uh, uh, they were in Ringgold's County, Iowa, mm -hmm. near Mount Air, I think is the town. Okay. They were close okay. to where they lived. And yeah. what nationality is Cain? Well, uh, my, I think my, I think my uh, grandparents on my mother's side, I think they were German. Okay. Their name was Terrell. Okay. And I think my dad's, on his, they said Scotch Irish, I, I don't know. Mm hmm. So I, mm -hmm. that's, what, like that's what I understood anyway. Okay. Now, what was your father's name? Wesley. Okay. Wesley Kane. Want to talk a little bit about him? What sort of a guy was he? Well, <laughs> Dad was a guy that uh, he never asked anybody for anything, really. He raised a family of eight. He run a road they run a roadhouse in Syme for some time. That's south of Lemon there about twenty miles. And then they bought this about hundred and sixty acres of land right south of Lemon. One of the things that that I remember about my dad and I think maybe a, some of these young people might be kinda of interesting to him. My dad went into the I was just a kid. I don't know how old it was. It was grade school, I suppose. And he went into the banker and asked if he uh, uh, to borrow some money. And the banker said, uh, "Well, Mr. Kane, what have you got for uh, um, what do I want to say for security?" Mm -hmm. He he said, "Well, he said I'd like to borrow fifty dollars." I have 160 acres of land, I have a team of horses, a team of mules, and eight milk cows, and I don't owe anybody anything. Banker looked at him and said, well, he said, we'll have to have a board meeting. I'll let you know this afternoon at one o'clock. My dad wasn't very happy about that. And he went over to the grocery store, and as happened, the fellow that run the grocery store was a director in the bank. And he told the manager of the, of the grocery store, he says, I don't think too much of your bank. And he says, what do you mean? And he gave him the same story. He said, uh, you be back there at 1 o'clock. And he was back at 1 o'clock, and I guess the whole picture changed suddenly. And <laughs> I don't know if my dad, I never heard of him ever saying that he borrowed any money after that or not, but. That was one of the highlights of my that I remember of my dad doing business with the bank. And what was your mother's name? My mother's name was Terrell, Laura Terrell, mm -hmm. and she was just a hardworking wife. You know, that's uh, raised the uh, eight of us kids. You know, 
that was tough going all those years. And she she was the first person to pass away in the Lemon Hospital here, in the new hospital, in uh, 19, well, it's been about 40, 50 probably. Mm -hmm. First first person of, of can with cancer. Mm -hmm. Um you you said there were eight of you kids. Uh, yeah, four boys and four girls. Four. And I'm the last one of the I'm the last one. Okay. Of the family. All right. You're the youngest then? No. I had a brother that I had a brother that passed away a couple of years ago. Okay. He okay. was the youngest. All right. Um what were all their names? Oh, let's see. There were uh, Osti and Grace, Virgie, Hazel, John, Jim, and Milo. Mm -hmm. Did they all live around here, or did they well, have some the girls, the uh, girls uh, uh, taught school a little bit, I believe, and then they married people out of the country. My sisters, uh, two. Three of them worked, went to Kansas, and my other sister was here for quite a while, and my uh, brothers, they were all around here for quite a while. In fact, they lived in the Dakotas for the rest of their life, they're out in Lemon. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you mentioned uh, the, the story about your dad. What are some of the other early memories you have from, I suppose, probably into the early 20s is when you start remembering stuff. Well. And you were I, out in the sod shanty at then? Yeah, well, I, I was born and raised there. I, no. uh, I, I don't, you see, I was, wasn't that old. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember too much, only what they tell me, that, uh, that they, they, ju they just, I don't know how they made a living on that 160 acres, but they had, had a little uh, cream tech and a few chickens, and mm -hmm. and when they got enough moisture, they had a little garden. I guess I I really can't understand how they did it. Yeah, it's difficult for settlers out here. Oh, that, it, it was. Small that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all they ever had. That's all he ever. My dad ever had was 160 acres. Mm -hmm. in, in the 1920s, uh, there were some kind of difficult economic times for, for, for farmers and ranchers. Do, did the banks fold around here? Did, were there well, yeah, I can banks? remember him talking about it, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know my my dad, I don't, it just seemed to me like he told me that he lost, I think, I don't know, it was maybe $200 or so. It was a small amount. Now you wouldn't even talk about it, but uh, it was all they had then, yeah. Mm -hmm. There was quite a few. Uh, I would, a fellow, uh, from over in the Morristown country, you know, we was reminiscing here a while back, and his dad had just came from uh, Sioux City with a load of cattle, and he was was making a, making his statements or making his notes good at the Morristown, and he sent the check in, and it they crashed it. They, the bank went broke before, and he got stuck for the he lost his livestock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's... Uh, sort of thing probably happened to a lot of people. Oh, I think it did, yeah. It did. Yeah. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you want a farm or a ranch when you were a kid? Well, really not. I, I don't know. I guess I just, uh, from, I went to high, I went to high school in Lemon four years. I graduated in 1936. Mm-hmm. And I just did everything there was to do. I, I, there's no name, no job that I don't think that I didn't have. I uh, worked in a sale barn. I drove truck. I tended bar. I worked in the grocery stores, and uh, I worked on construction, putting the streets in lemon. I helped in when I I was only about 18 years old, then, or six, 17, mm -hmm. and. Uh, uh, there isn't, and then uh, the later years, then I went in '36. I uh, got, was working in a grocery store, and uh, I went with another fellow, and we went to uh, Washington, and I worked out there in harvest fields. Mm -hmm. Done that off and on for four years. How'd you get out there? I went with a neighbor of mine, a friend of mine, 
was going to Washington, so I, he said I could go along with him. And I don't know how I had enough money to do it, but we got to Washington and got a job and worked there for a couple months and then hitchhiked home. Oh, okay. We okay. worked out west of Spokane. Uh-huh. In later years, we went out, next year, second year, I guess we went out and worked in Mount Bozeman, Montana, and then I worked another year or two in the harvest out in Washington again. Worked for the same guy there two or three times. Okay. Did you uh, attend country school out south of town here? Yeah, I went to the carpenter school uh, eight years, went to the same school. Eight okay, years. how was that? What? How was that? Uh, you want to talk about that a little bit? Well, country school out here. It was a. It was. A, I think we learned something then. Mm-hmm. We learned how to read and write, and we could make change for five dollars and ten dollars, pretty good. Yep. We didn't have any money, but we we did. We learned to read and write. I even remember that was my long suit learning to A. N. Palmer writing, and uh, uh, then we had some very good teachers. I had. Uh, I had two sister-in-laws that were my teachers, and then we had a, a, some other real good teachers, and that, and we had big, you know, 10, 12, 15 kids in these little, little one, one-room one schoolhouse, you know. Mm-hmm. But uh, I think that they, that they learned probably a lot more then than they do now, because you could steal a little bit from the older people if you wanted to, and the younger kids, I don't know, it was different prospects, but uh, that reading and writing, I still see these poor people that the only thing they know that uh, the computer says that they either owe them 50 cents or they're short 50 cents or something, they can't count money. It, it's it's kind of mind boggling to me what's going on in this great world. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Um. 1930s, or did the were there dust storms out here in this area? In 1930, in 1936, we'll talk about that because I can yeah. talk about. Yeah. I, I were I was working in the grocery store in Lemon. I was on the ball team south of Lemon, but I was getting my dollar a day, and I couldn't afford not to stay at work. So we worked the Fourth of July, 1936. The grasshoppers was thick then, you know. You couldn't hardly see the sky. And I remember the, some of the people that went to the, uh, my buddies that went to the ball games, their wives, they said that, that the grasshoppers ate their silk, their socks. Oh. And they were on the telephone poles, you know, and, and the, you just couldn't see the sun part of the time. And it was, you know, so dry. Yep. yep. Yeah, it's unbelievable, really. For for several years. Yeah. Really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's. Uh, yeah. Those. Uh, yeah, I'll never forget that because that Fourth of July, nineteen thirty-six. I worked it. I don't think I done much work. There were three of us, myself and the fellow that owned the store. His daughter and uh, his daughter and boy worked there and they, we had, none of us I don't think I earned her a dollar but there was about five or six grocery stores in Lemon and they were all open that day everything was open but I, I don't know how they stayed open because there just wasn't nobody had any money yep, yep. Um, Of course, we come up to the end of the 1930s and uh, in the in World War II. Uh, uh, do you remember where you were on when Pearl Harbor was attacked? Yeah, I think I think I was. Uh, let's see, that was it. Uh, was uh, 1941. 1941. I I guess I was I was probably I was in, working in Lemon then. I was. I worked at, to begin with, I worked at the Farmers Co-op Association at Thunderhawk. Mm, mm-hmm. And then I was drafted in the service in April 8th, April 8th and 42. Mm-hmm. And then I spent three and a half, three years and a half in the service. 
And then I came back and went to work at the Farmers Co-op Association at Thunderhawk. And I run the elevator there for a couple of years before I came to Lemon. Okay. Where were you at when you were in the military? What, what? I was in a European operation. Okay. We, we had uh, about one year over there. We had, we, I think I my, spent my birthday both ways going over and coming back. And our outfit was a tank destroyer outfit. We had, we had a, I forget how many days of combat out of that year. It was a lot of. Mm -hmm. We was with Patton's outfit, Third Army. Okay. Okay. Uh, that was pretty tough at times. Yeah, it was. I I was very fortunate. I guess I was with the rear echelon most of the time, but. Yeah, we lost a bunch of wonderful guys, young guys. That's that's what makes me wonder why people think this world, this little uh, war, is so great and how we're how we're doing. I don't think the whole country is worth one of our guys, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. the, I've yep. seen some of those young guys. We had some of these officers that. Uh, I don't. They 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 couldn't take any responsibility. All they they put on a big front. And I one of my one of my good friends, one of the boys in one of the platoons, got killed just for we we have those things happen. People don't hear about those things. You know we have. Uh, you know you hear it on TV about these officers and doing these things. Well, we we've got some screwy people in this country. And they aren't all, all the enemies. There's some of your own are the worst enemies you got. And I, in later years, we've had reunions. There's not too many of us anymore. We have, uh, with in our but that we was just a battalion. There was about twelve hundred to start with, and then we went to a move to a, a tanks. Why then we there's about eight hundred. It was four companies in the headquarters. Mm -hmm. And there isn't too many left anymore. We had uh, we had a reunion in Rapid City here about six years ago, but we have a reunion somewhere every year. But there probably only maybe fifteen twenty guys going now. We're all getting too old to really travel. We send a letter back and tell them what we're doing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When did you get out of the service then? I got out in October uh, 1945. Okay, okay. And where were you when the war ended? Were you did, were you in Germany then? No, um, we was back here getting. It was going to South, talking going to the Pacific again. Oh, you, know? you were ready to go to the Pacific. We, yeah, we were back. Here. They brought no. us back here, and we were just waiting for more. And then the, that was pretty much the case with a lot of people. Yeah, I we were some other people just standing by. Situation. Yeah. 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 We had enough points to get out. We was glad to get out. Mm -hmm. And you came back here. And yeah. Went to work at yeah, yeah. Thunderhawk, right? Yeah, I came back to Lemon, but I worked in Thunderhawk. Mm -hmm. um, how was it working for a co-op back in those days? Oh, we had a, the fellow that probably one of the guys that I always looked up to. He was uh, quite a farmers union boy, and that was John Reedy. He was a director on the. South, I think, at one time there, and I worked for John, so I had a good boss. Mm -hmm. He was a co-op man. He didn't mean he uh, didn't mince any words. You knew where he stood all the time. Yep, he was involved in a lot of cooperatives. Oh yeah, yeah, he was. Yep. Yeah, and then I wound up getting in the same kind of a deal. You know, I in the South Dakota Association of Co-ops and the North Dakota Association managers deals and mm -hmm. uh, it seemed like after that we we got into a lot of we had the farmers union check off in Lemon and that's uh, that uh, was quite an asset to South Dakota Farmers Union and yes. North Dakota Farmers Union because we we checked their dues off out mm -hmm. of their dividends and stuff and you had a lot of patrons here. What well, we you had did, a lot of yeah, we had here. a lot of patrons in. Yep. I forget how many we had, but it was it was quite a bunch of them. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. When did you start at Lemon? Then? When did I start? Yeah. Uh, I guess I went over there a, a, a first of uh, 1948, I think. Okay. I think I, 40, yeah, for January 48, I think it was, I started. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Were you married? No, never was married. Never married, okay. No. Um, what, you, did you, you, you started over at uh, Thunderhawk, uh, did you, uh, uh, did you become manager over here at Lemon right away, or? Yeah, at okay. Lemon I did. At Thunderhawk I worked for, uh, I, wor I, I worked for John Reedy, and then I came back, and then there was another man running the place when I came back after the service, and I uh, went I went to work for them. I was oh, probably in November of 1945, after just after I came home. Mm -hmm. and then, in after the about the middle of the year, I took over the place. He quit. He he quit, and I took over. And there was another fellow from Lemon that. Boy, that we went to school together. He came over a second man, mm -hmm. and then I worked there till the end of '47 or whatever it was, and, and then I came to Lemon, and he took over at Thunderhawk. Okay. Farm prices were pretty good about then. Well, yeah, they they was they was pretty good then, compared to now. I guess they're about the same price. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. Comparatively, Compar they yeah. were a lot better then, probably. Oh yeah, yeah really. Yeah. yeah. Um. Well, of course, one of the uh, things you had to deal with up here you know, over the years was the railroads. Uh, yeah. Uh, you you had the Milwaukee Road was yeah, the Milwaukee yeah, Road yeah. early on here. Oh yeah. How yeah. were they to deal with? Well, uh, our trouble was, you know, we had in Lemon we had two or three elevators, and we was fighting for cars and stuff, you know, yeah. all the time, but. Uh, we probably had kind of the lion's share of the business, so we uh, we we got by fairly well, as good as you could be expected. It's never changed. It seems like that they have, still have trouble getting cars when they need them, and, and uh, you know. But mm -hmm. but uh, we got fairly good service from uh, Milwaukee, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. Were you were you still managing here when uh, Burlington Northern uh, took over the line? No, I I let see. I got out in eighty two. Okay, and that would have just been about that. About, time. about that same time in yeah. that neck of the woods there, yeah, because I remember some yeah. correspondence back and forth with some of the people in Milwaukee, mm -hmm. on the Milwaukee. Yeah, yeah. Um, what were the what were the kind of issues you faced running an elevator in the back? Let's say in the nineteen fifties and sixties. We'll go back a ways first. Well, I suppose my the biggest ones uh, was probably accounts receivable and money stuff. Yeah. We we was kind of a half. Uh, we was real loose on uh, credit, you know, or mm -hmm. I guess you would call it loose. We it belonged to the farmers, and of course we. Uh, extended a lot of uh, credit, but it seemed like we we had, we didn't make a lot of money, but uh, and but we didn't really lose a, a lot of money either, considering the number of people that we were uh, servicing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our accounts receivable later years got awful big, but uh, we were still able to. Kind of, now that I think of it, I think probably. If we'd have been a little tougher, we would have probably made more money because we didn't charge enough interest, or you know, mm, on accounts yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but yeah. we we was always under the impression we were giving them a service, and maybe a few guys took advantage of you, you know. But mm -hmm. we we had we had a really all in all good customers. One experience I think about very often. I sent out a credit letter, you know, that we'd like to have our money and and uh, this and that, you know. And one of the customers come walking in and he said, Well, Elmo, I guess we uh, have to quit doing business with you. And I'll never forget that. I guess the tears were rolling down my cheeks almost. And I said, Well, we're just trying to, you know, get 
get keep the thing going. He sat there a little bit and he looked at me and he wrote out a check for twenty five hundred dollars credit. Just he, but they were just testing some of us. Mm, okay. Good guy, good fellows, good customers. Yep. But they they wanted to know if he was sincere. If he wasn't, you know. Mm-hmm. We had dedicated people. Yep. A lot of them. Yep. Um. Back in those days, well, you were a, you were affiliated with both uh, GTA and Cenex. Did you sell Cenex? Uh, we stuff? I bought I bought from all of them. Yeah. I played one against the other a little mm-hmm. bit. I played the game. I was, uh, I one thing I can always remember, when just after the war was over, I came to, Le- I was in Lemon, after I came to Lemon. Mm-hmm. Uh, steel posts and wire and all that stuff was hard to get a hold of. And I knew we could sell a gob of it, so I called. For, and I did a lot of business with Farmland Industries, probably mm-hmm. more. I don't know why. I guess the reason why was their field men. Senex had some field, or Farmers Union and Grain Terminal, or Central Farmers Union Central yeah. Jade had a salesman or two that was, you know, how that goes. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other guys that I would deal with were just different. So yeah. I needed a. We needed a bunch of wire, and I called Farmland Industries, and I said, uh, we could use a carload of steel posts and wire. And that's quite an order. Oh, we'd sure like to sure like to fix you up with that, but, with the, you know, that stuff is short. It would be probably two months before you could ever get that. I said, well, that's all right. I'm going to try and get I'll call Farmers Union. Uh, Central Exchange and see if they can do any good. But if he can get it, I'll take a load. So then I turned around, got up, and called Central Exchange, gave him the same song and dance, and uh, told him, well, and they gave me the same song and dance. It wouldn't be possible. I said, well, if you can get it, uh, I could use a carload of steel posts and wire. And there's only about one guy, and that's my grain buyer that's still alive in Lemon that, that could probably verify that. We had two, in two weeks, we had two semi loads, two, two uh, car loads of steel posts and wire sitting at Lemon. Okay. And they, and they were selling back then, they were probably, I think we sold uh, the wire for about $6 a roll barbed wire and I think we were getting from 65 to 75 cents for steel posts mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and we sold gobs of them. Yeah, well what, when was that? Would have been? That would have been, uh, well that would probably have been just in the, the early 50s. Okay. Yeah, just, it was, everything was going pretty good then. People were buying a lot of fencing material and they had a little money and yeah, that's so. Uh, we was the biggest dealer in South Dakota that year. Mm. From we, I got a trip to uh, Duluth, Minnesota, to go through the uh, wire plant and all that stuff there over that deal. Because, uh, just to, because we were the, to what the top dealer in South Dakota. Okay. Okay. Who was? What plant would that have been? Was that a uh, was that a co-op plant? I know they... they no, American Steel. American Steel. Okay. American Steel at okay. Duluth. But you did have a kind of a regular catalog that uh, Central Exchange, I suppose Farmland had one too. Oh yeah, they all. A lot of that stuff. Uh, last week I borrowed at least uh, one of those catalogs from Ken Stilson who used to manage the co-op in Britain. And, oh. Uh, had, had one and you could, you could buy everything from a kitchen stove to a combine. From oh yeah. We, I sold, I sold uh, machinery mm-hmm. later years, yep. combines and few, quite a few tractors. Mm-hmm. See, if we were, see if it must have been about 1930 or 47 or 48, the co-op tractor came out. Yep. And I can remember the first one that came from, it came 
out of Lemon, and but they took it to Thunderhawk. They loaded it, rode it, rode it to Thunderhawk, and that was one of those with a Chrysler Industrial Motor, high speed. You know, you could you could rode down the road about 35 mile an hour with that. Uh-huh. And I, I believe Frank Butler, he was one of the old Farmers Union boys, and you know, I think he was probably the first guy to buy one of those in 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 Lemon, if I remember right. Mm-hmm. Did they sell pretty good out here? Well, they were kind of light. They uh, the the ones the outfits that sold pretty good for such was the E three and E four uh, co op tractors mm-hmm. that was made Gamble or co op or uh, whatever name they had on them. It, let's see, Ga- mm-hmm. Gamble's had the same one. They were made in Canada. Yeah, Cockshot. Mm-hmm. Really is what they mm-hmm. were. Yeah, some of them actually had Farmers Union on them that I've seen. Yeah, the Farmers Union. Get, try, yeah, they all had, they all. That's right. Yeah, they all had. Uh, mm-hmm. They were they were just painted different different yeah. colors. Yeah, different. Colors. I can remember distinctly one old fellow that wanted to buy one from me. He kept looking at this one and kept looking at it. Finally, we made a deal. You know, we sold those things for about. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen hundred dollar. Probably only made fifty dollars on them if we did that. And this old fellow, he finally decided he was going to buy it. And it, I thought they were really a pretty flashy outfit. They were kind of a bright orange, and uh, and he took that thing home. And then, and the only thing that was bothering him was the color. He took a paint. He took a paintbrush and painted that battleship gray. Mm. <laughs> but that I could remember that. Yeah. So we, did he? Did he have a preference for other com- tractors or something? Didn't Case used to have gray equipment? I think. Uh, yeah, it seems to. Yeah, the old Case tractors were gray. I think. Yeah. 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 Our our bigger the the E four tractor and the International M were just about the same thing. And that they were the best in that in that category. They were about the best sellers and. You know about that fifteen, sixteen hundred dollar price. Mm-hmm. Quite uh, sounds like quite a price today when you think about what what farm equipment costs. Oh yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's unbelievable. Um, back in those days, were were was were a grain government uh, used to pay storage payments to elevators? Was that a pretty significant thing for yeah that that operations? that kind of kept the things going. Yeah, we had uh, we had quite a bit of storage and and, the, and you kept that that kind of kept the thing rolling, that money coming in from storage. Mm-hmm. And then we filled these government grain granaries too. We filled those with grain and we got paid for filling them. Filling them and unfilling them, unloading them. Yeah. When did they get rid of those? What? When did they get rid of those government? When did they get rid of them? You know, was it? it must have been like about seventy. If I'm, I'm thinking seventy. It might have been before. Time it gets clear away from me. I, I can't remember dates like mm-hmm. a lot of people do. Yeah. But uh, we had a lot of those big tanks and stuff and then pretty soon they just went up for sale and people bought them and took them home with them or whatever happened but they all disappeared most all of them have disappeared mm-hmm. I think there might be still a few of them down here and somebody had bought them down at Thunderhawk I think there's still a few sitting there in that lot yet yeah yeah there were a lot of did, did the farmers out here store as much green on the farm as they did further east uh, the, it the didn't farm, seem like they, farm well, they, they didn't have that much. I don't yeah. think we sold a lot of, you know, thousand and twenty two hundred bushels grain bins. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, did did you uh, back in those days? There were were there some in, interesting people you enjoyed working with. Uh, or something that you didn't enjoy working well, with? Well, I, I, I got worked with most people. I was on the fair board. I worked with the FHA boys and the 4-H kids and the mm-hmm. junior livestock show. I, I th- all the, Every year that I was there, and I started in 40, I think I, after I came to Lemon, I think it was probably the first year I started, 
always got the Farmers Union bus and we took a load to the GTA annual meeting and we always took uh, at least six or eight or ten kids with us, always, and sometimes more than that. Yep. And uh, in a uh, elevator, they paid for their, uh, probably for their lodging and meals, and uh, uh, Farmers Union furnished a bus to us, and, and uh, we then we took them on those tours through Central Exchange and and GTA and through the St. Paul uh, stockyards and and whatever whatever there was to see around town. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, Ham's Brewery and some of the some of the places that people like to see. Sure. People really enjoyed that, and it really the young people seeing what was going on helped our business a lot too. Uh-huh. We had some people that were probably. Plum anti co op is what I, would, I guess I would say. They went with us and on these tours and stuff, and some of them came back. It wasn't too long that their dad and some of them were some of our best customers. They just hadn't, they, you know, they'd either been misinformed or, or just did what their the whole thing, you know, and they had mm-hmm. shit never changed. Yep. I think of one fellow quite often. He always went over to the other elevator. He always always treated me nice, good, you know. He wound up someplace in the hospital and I guess I sent him a card or something. It seems to me like that's the way it was. And you know, he it wasn't long he came back and he was one of our best customers. Yep. And his son was when I left the place he was the one of the guys that got up and gave us a little Give a little story, song for me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. These young people are very important in the country. Mm-hmm. If, if they get the right information, if they get the wrong information, well, then it's you have a little problems around. But That's all in all, uh, why education is important. Yeah. You know, my philosophy was, any time spent with youth is time well spent. Mm-hmm. That's my own philosophy. Um, what about the, some of the leadership folks at the regionals? Do did, did, did you have any viewpoint on people like uh, M.W. Thatcher? Uh, M.W. Thatcher, uh, I, I could sit and listen to him, you know, he was he was outstanding. Barney Molusky was a mm-hmm. special friend of mine. Yep. I, uh, I had the opportunity to go in and work with their managers a time or two, helping with their uh, when they had a school or something, you know, and I, I just, I just had a niece uh, come in and see me last Friday, and she looked at a picture over here, and uh, she said, "Who is that?" And I said, "Well, that I took that picture over in Hawaii at the manager's meeting over there," and uh, uh, this is the pic. The picture is right up here. I, mm-hmm. I, I, do you know what? Uh, uh, right here. Okay, yeah, and I got that there shirt on, and that, that it's been in my board, wardrobe, I guess, for I, it was about nineteen seventy seventy nine or eighty. When okay, we and uh, I got the shirt in there for it's never I never wore it, I guess. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we had about thirty or forty managers there, and mm-hmm. I don't know how come they came to me, but they said, you're going to be Master Ceremonies t- this tonight. So, <coughs> I, I used to be MC a little bit, had a radio program on the, ra- on the, on the, ele- at the elevator for years, mm-hmm. about a five minute deal at, you know, five minutes to 12 or five minutes to one or whatever. Mm-hmm. Giving them the market and then a little thought for today or... Mm-hmm. That was may- a local station here at Lincoln. Yeah, mm-hmm. no. maybe a little, maybe just a little news or something happened to somebody or something that I thought might be interesting to the people who's listened to. It had about five minutes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that helped quite a bit. We had quite a few people that listened to market then. and. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, Barney Molusky, I knew him real well, and then we, I was pretty well, 
I'm all the people in, in the, not in Central Exchange too much, quite a bit in farmland industries. I knew them quite well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who were some of the guys there? Uh, <laughs> you know, it, I'm kind of embarrassed once in a while. I had a slight stroke a few years ago. Oh, yeah. And uh, when I want to say these people's names, I can't think of them. Uh, the fellow that, uh, maybe I'll think of it after a bit. The, the, the general manager at Farmland Industries came from Aberdeen came mm -hmm. from the wheat growers. Yeah. Uh, you probably know his name better than I do. If I, yeah, I, if I, I just can't say it right now. I, mm -hmm. I visited with him the last time I was in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I can't tell you the, there was another fellow uh, that was for many years that I knew real well that was manager at uh, Farmland Industries too. But, you know, for the life of me, I couldn't tell you his name right now. I, yeah. plumb blank. <laughs> uh, what about some of the folks at Senex? Did you uh, Senex? I I didn't know those people that well. Okay. We went through Senex. We went. Mm -hmm. uh, they'd usually put on a dinner for us and everything, but I just didn't know know that I wasn't mm -hmm. that wasn't personally uh, close to those guys. Yeah. But the, in GTA or in farmland and some of those guys it was a little little different atmosphere something I don't know why mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, what about the did you get to know the uh, state directors for the, the regionals did they come out to meetings in those days oh yeah I knew I knew quite a few of those guys yeah yeah well August Dami was one of them and there's one of them Phil Testerman yep he still asks about me I'm told I helped get him on that board, kind of, you mm -hmm. know, indirectly. And uh, there's a, a, kind of, a young fellow that lives here in Lemon. He's a county commissioner. And he goes to Pier quite often. And he sees Phil Testerman. And he said, Phil always says, tell me hi. So mm -hmm. I, I haven't seen him for years. But, uh, yeah. Good guy. He's the first guy I interviewed for the project. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Another guy that I often, uh, one of my old uh, got polit political friends was George McGovern. Mm, mm -hmm. And I, I met him at a meeting down when we were all about, I suppose, about 25 years old, 26, 27. He was just out of college, good, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Does that, would that have been after the war then? Oh, yeah, yeah. 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 See, George, he was a, he was in the war too. Yeah, he was pilot. a he was a pilot. Yeah, yeah. He was he was in Lemon. He came in here with, uh, one time, or he was here several times. But uh, he came in here one time uh, with the news media from Rapid City and interviewed me and showed us or showed us around Lemon. And we were adding some facilities there on the elevator. And he gave us he was he was. Quite a guy, as far as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, he he was just the wrong politics yeah. <laughs> in South Dakota to be on my side of the fence. But he he was an intelligent man, yeah. and he, I see him on TV. I saw him just a few, not too long ago, maybe a month ago, on the TV there, inter being mm -hmm. interviewed. He's still he's still. He's still very. He's had a tough row, and he's he's doing well. Yeah, they they've uh, they're just in the process of I think this fall opening the new library at Dakota West Lane. That's yeah, I think so. Center is set up. Yeah, there, you know. yeah. Uh, how about your relationship with your employees over the years? Did you have any particular approach to working with people? Well, I had. A, my system was, I told them I had to kind of work like a family. And uh, we didn't didn't have too much of a turnover on help. I had some guys that worked for me for, one boy, I worked there, he worked, he was my bookkeeper. He was there when I came and he was there when I left. Mm -hmm. And then we had some, and we had another, well, we had some other boys that was in there for over 20 years. So we we had we had good help most of the time. 
we, we they were dedicated fellows. I told them, you know, if my philosophy was if I'm not there to do what I'm supposed to do and you're around, you go ahead and do it. And if you're doing something else and and I can do it, well, I'll do it. We uh, work it kind of, it isn't like it is anymore. If you aren't uh, so-and-so, you don't do that job. You're just uh, sorry there's nobody here to do it. And, and you don't have the service and stuff. But uh, uh, that was one thing that I really stressed on our manager deals when we had those seminars and stuff. You've got to give service. That that was that was the main thing. Mm -hmm. We I always tell think about uh, we had a couple older fellows that went to work us later years that they'd worked at these other elevators. Those old boys, they done their work, and when they were done, when there wasn't really anything much to do, they had a broom and a shovel and your elevator and stuff. Every the driveway and everything was always clean. You mm -hmm. never, you had it, a lot, there was a lot of places that wasn't that way, but ours was that way. Yeah, we had good guys. Uh, did you think it was uh, important that they understand what a, how a cooperative worked? Oh yeah, I think most most of the people in our outfit knew how they worked. Most of them did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty mm -hmm. much. Yeah, they had worked there quite a while. We we the my nephew, he's in lives in Mobridge now. He he ran the oil department there. He was there for about thirty some years. Yeah. And yeah, we had. Uh, we had a bunch of dedicated people. They they were just they, they they never got much money. The only good thing that we did we had a retirement. We got a retirement deal set up a long long time ago, and that that was one thing that helped out our employees was their uh, retirement. So those little, those fellows that worked all those years, they, they along with their social security and their retirement, they could kind of live. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How was your relationship with other co-ops around here? You were pretty close to Thunderhawk over here. Oh, we that we were hundred percent. Didn't we? We uh, we uh, we used to put on co-op neighbor night, and that was farmers co-op at Thunderhawk, and then there was the Lemon uh, Cooperative Association. That was the propane, mm -hmm. and then we had the production credit. They were co-op, you know. And uh, Lemon X, we put on neighbor night. We had uh, at the armory here. We put on a free supper, supper and entertainment and stuff. Uh, I think we had the biggest co-op neighbor night in the country at one time. I I don't have the stuff anymore, I guess, on it. But uh, we had uh, about uh, I think we had pretty near two thousand people there that night for supper wow. over here in the armory, and. Uh, um, Ralph Herseth was here. He was uh, our main speaker that particular mm -hmm. year. Was that when he was governor? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We had. I think. I thought, but it's probably about seventeen, eighteen hundred people. But we always said it was getting close to two thousand. It was. It was a, mm -hmm. quite a crowd. Everybody, you know, everybody came, and then we had entertainment uh, from schools. Back in those days, we had. Uh, the school kids had programs and stuff, and they could come in and put on music skits or whatever, you know. And we, it was just kind of a fun night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, was there wasn't there a cooperative store up here too? Yeah, we had a lemon, lemon co-op store? store. Yeah, there was a store here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is that there anymore? Or no, that isn't there anymore. We've only got one store in Lemon now. Yeah, were there were there two then when the Oh, the cooperative was operating. Oh, there was more than that. More than that. There was okay. probably about four or five of them. Then. Oh, okay. And I just talked to a guy the other yes the other day. I happened to be in the clinic in Hedinger, and and uh, he mentioned his name, and then he started talking to me, and and his brother had run the co-op store in Hedinger, and of course in the Hedinger, Adams County, North Dakota, they had a strong farmers union. Mm -hmm. Thing going in that they, it was a co-op station, co-op uh, store, but you yeah. know, pretty much you know run by the farmers union people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was there a credit union up here? Yeah, we had a credit union here, but I, I think I'm still the only guy that's got a few dollars left in it. 
Okay. I think I'm the only one left. I'm, 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 I'm almost positive of that. Are they, there might are they be, here anymore wait, or are they... Oh yeah, they have five. They have five outlooks. We started with in a little garage on farm Frank Butler's house here in Lemon. And uh, Myron White was selling insurance for Farmers Union. And see, I was one of the, I and Frank Butler were one of the far, first Farmers Union insurance agents, I think, up in this neck of the woods. And uh, uh, there were a lot of part time agents then. Yeah, yeah, we, uh, uh, yeah, there was quite a few then. And then, uh, uh, let's see. In later years, then Francis Holm took over uh, mm -hmm. Frank's deal after Frank got killed. And oh. Frank Butler was my cousin. Oh, really? Yeah, we were cousins. Okay, second I didn't cousins, know that. first cousin. Oh, yeah, didn't yeah. Know that. Frank flew me all over the, when we had to go to meetings and stuff. He'd fly me to Bismarck or fly me to. Huron or wherever we had to go. Yeah, he was quite a guy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was quite a shock when he uh, oh, yeah. crashed. See, his there. his Frank and his wife, Frank and his brother and wife, were both killed in that accident. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then he did do a lot of flying. Oh yeah. He had what? Two or three planes? Well, I don't know if he had. Yeah, he probably during his lifetime he did. Yeah. But he would. He, I, I was told by several guys that he was. He was one of the best pilots for a guy that flew by the seat of his pants quite a bit. Uh, he he knew what he was doing. I can remember one night, uh, one day I had to go to Bismarck, and then I was supposed to be at a meeting and and here in that night. Or the next day, and Frank said, "Well, I'll fly you to Bismarck." And I went over to the airport here in Lemon, and here come Frank. And normally he was all dressed up, you know, and he had his farmer clothes on. And he said, "I'll just run you to Bismarck, and I'll come back and farm the rest of the day, and then I'll come up and pick you up tonight." So he took me to Bismarck, and he came back, and he said, "I'll be in about nine o'clock." So I got a hold of the guys, and nine o'clock they met me at the airport, and he said we're going. To, it's going to be a little tough going to Brookings. He said uh, a lot of fog, but we took off and we got over Mo Bridge and on there, and we was flying pretty high. And he called in after a little bit, and they said, "Well, ceiling's about a thousand feet, but it's really foggy over here." We'll call in, and they called in a little bit later and said, we'll throw the lights on, but it's a thousand feet. And Frank says, well, it's pretty soupy here, but he said, you watch for the ground and I'll watch some, uh, uh, whatever. Yep. And uh, when I, I said, well, I can see the ground. And when we hit, when we went in, we were just as straight on that. A runway as you could ever hope to be. <laughs> but he, he was, a guy told me that he knew those instruments to a T, although he, you know, he, he didn't have really have much of a, I don't think Frank ever went, finished high school, but right? he had his, he had a lot of, he had a lot of um, information in his head. Yeah, mm -hmm. he, was, he was a little different kind of a guy, you know. Yeah. Yeah, he took quite an interest uh, when we were, the last year he was living, uh, we were building the extension on the office in Huron, and he took a lot of interest in the architectural yeah. planning for he, that. He was in on that uh, livestock deal, too, at St. Paul. He was in there a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fump up work. Yeah, when I, I bought a cup, one or two loads of cattle for that outfit one time. It's, it's some guys who had some cattle, and another guy kind of knew a little bit more about cattle than I did. And uh, but I, I had the uh, uh, we bought a couple semi loads for St. Paul. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see here. Um. Uh, 
When did you, uh, you said you retired in 1982? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I retired in 82. Mm -hmm. I went to, I, I got a uh, $5,000 check for retirement from Lemon Equity Exchange, so I, mm -hmm. I went on the People to People tour to China. Oh, with okay. The Briggs mm -hmm. and uh, Ralph Herseth, not Ralph Herseth, uh, uh, from Bristol, Ralph uh, um, Hansmeyer. Oh, yeah. The Hansmeyer and Sons at Bristol Fire, that uh, big seed outfit, mm -hmm. and then uh, uh, Archie Good, Archie Good, mm -hmm. and there was about about a dozen couples and myself went to that people people tour in China. Okay. Okay. What did you see over there? Well, <laughs> that was twenty years ago. Oh, yeah. Twenty five years ago. There's a yeah. lot of changes, but oh yeah. Like yeah, when I was there, you know, they were still work working on those old uh, K-5 internationals trying to keep them running and there's a few tractors around here and there but mm -hmm. so you did get out on farms one well, yeah we got out around some yeah we were in, we were there we were in China and Japan yeah, yeah understand it'd be pretty quite a lot of changes today oh yeah it, it would be altogether different but I one thing that I can kind of remember, one of the highlights, I went in a, mo in a hotel there that one day, and a, a real, he was a big Chinaman for for Chinese, and he said, you're an American? I said, yeah, we're on the people to people tour here from South Dakota, and the first thing he said, pure? Mm -hmm. I said, yeah. He says, I know what that 30 degree below zero is. I went to school in Fargo, he said. <laughs> and he could talk English as good. And that, that's one of the things I could remember of the Chinese deals. So uh, once you got back from doing that, what, what have you been doing with yourself since you Well, I, I have a little, little, I call it a farm out, mm -hmm. south, out in North Dakota, but. 600 acres all together mm -hmm. and uh, have a few cows and and then there's one of the boys that worked at the elevator all these years he's still working he works for southwest grain he's a feed man he works for harvest states i guess okay but he uh and he kind of liked that there and he we, he always kind of we had a little share deal and he's been and since i got older and in the last couple of years and the last year away uh, we run a few cattle together, and he does the work, and I walk, drive around, look around, see what's going on. Mm -hmm. well, you got to do that. Yeah, uh, I've, um, I've been pretty lucky. I had a lot of ups and downs, but I've been so damn lucky. I just, I had a pacemaker put in about three weeks ago, mm -hmm. and I'm just getting. I think I'm just getting straightened out. I. Uh, getting my medication and stuff kind of straightened around again, but I wound up, I guess, about uh, Memorial Day, they was thinking I was about ready for <laughs> going on the hill somewhere, according to the way my heart was working, I guess. But evidently, thanks to a bunch of good doctors and good Lord, I guess, that they're I'm doing pretty good. I go. I still go out to farm whenever I want to, and and uh, drive around, and go over and watch them play cards or play cards mm -hmm. a little once in a while. Go to the Guys, livestock sales. Anyway, go to the oh yeah, I go. I hardly ever miss a sale. I was, I got the, I was, when we put the. See, we've got one of the best sale barns in South Dakota, and. Uh, I had to. I and another this boy that run the elevator at Thunderhawk. We had an old forge and tractor, and we farmed this twenty or thirty acres over here where the sail barn is. And when they decided they wanted a sail barn, why then I, I knew the people the, that owned the land, so they had me. If I flew to Detroit and and bought the land for them there, and mm -hmm. that, then they. That's where the sale part. I was, and then I was a director on the sale part for many years. But yeah, it's, it's quite a. It's a good place now. One of the one of the top ones in the 
western South Dakota. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Move a lot of the livestock through there. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's it's one of the. I think it's uh, over in this side. Well, it, uh, I don't know if if uh, if uh, faith could. Be, well, I, I it, but it's right up in the top. It's it's a. Uh, it's got a good market, really mm-hmm. a good market. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess we talked a little bit about this before we turned on the recorder, but uh, what's your evaluation of the state of cooperatives in this part of the world, uh, particularly in this part of South Dakota these days? You know, I, I, I've lost track of putting everything. You, uh, I uh, talked to some young fellow here a while back, and... I said, what are you doing? And he said, well, he was telling me that somebody worked in a co-op there. Well, there's there's still of them, are, some are still working real good. There's one up here at Scranton, North Dakota. It's I, it's, It uh, does a lot of business with farmland. Mm-hmm. But it's the only one around cl- close that is, that is still in good, it, it's, it's a big operation. It's a, uh, I I don't suppose it's near as big as uh, Southwest Grain, mm-hmm. but it's it's competitive, and they they're still from the old school. They got their co-op station and co-op service and uh, everything that goes with it. I always respected they. Had, I knew those people real well, and uh, they they've always run a really a good co-op. Mm-hmm. And then of course, uh, on the other side of it's the south the. Um, wheat growers, but they own. They're they're big too. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, of course you've got a, a Sunic station here in town, but it's uh, well, he's, he's privately owned. He's privately owned now, and he don't have enough business to. I I uh, there's a another some other people have a little eating joint in the Sunic place there, and I eat there quite often, mm-hmm. and. Uh, I don't think they sell enough fuel there to pay for their lights. Mm. I really don't. They, they, they're they dinging around doing something all the time. I don't know where they get, where this guy gets his money. I have no idea because uh, they don't do any business there. Jesus, I can't imagine. And then our, I think our local co-op lost quite a bit of, uh, uh, I think, some of these other outfits are getting some of their gas business and stuff. Now I'm not, I don't keep track of that too close mm-hmm. anymore. I know the boys. Uh, I still buy my gas, my bulk gas at the farm from them, but I, I hardly ever go into Cenex anymore because there's no service or anything. So you just well go wherever you feel like you're kind of wanted a little bit. They treat you a little different. Mm-hmm. I was telling a guy today. I said this one thing about it when we ran a co-op I always had time to say hi and I'll be with you in just a minute or something I at least I went in a cafe this morning there's a new one just started there and they're having some problems in it and the people that run a gal that run it she I've been there for years I walked in this morning I understand that they will help most of them left and I walked in and they looked around there and nobody came in the way and I just got up and walked out and went over to the other place. Uh, hell, if you can't uh, say good morning or I'll be with you in a minute or if you're not interested, if you think it's all there is to run in one of these outfits is just clean out the cash register, they're crazy because there won't be nothing to clean out. When did, when did uh, Lemon Equity become part of Southwest Grain? You know, I... That was after you retired. Yeah, it must have been about... Uh, you know, I really don't know. It was about... Uh, it must be about 10 years ago now. Okay. In in that vicinity. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, what do you... What do you think of the challenges facing cooperatives around here? Obviously... Uh, providing service, maybe is that a challenge? I don't know. Well, yeah, and 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 uh, and uh, competition and stuff. I uh, I I don't know what their philosophy is. Uh, you know, way back they kind of preach to us: be sure and take care of these, get these big deals. Well, that 
That never worked with me. The little guy was always just about as important as the big guy as far as I was concerned. And uh, I, uh, 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 oh, about last spring, one of my neighbors over here called me and said, Elmo, can you drive a truck to Hedinger? Or can you go up to Hedinger and bring my pickup back? I said, yeah, I'm not doing nothing. So I went up there. He went to Hedinger to have his grain cleaned. Mm. That's 25 miles. Yep. And he always came here. And then uh, we got to talking about it a little, and then uh, he was going 70 miles to get his fertilizer because he could save 20 to 30 ton of thirty dollars a ton on them. And you know, I can't. It's hard for me to believe, you know, because when we started selling fertilizer, we was selling it for forty dollars a ton, you know, thirty-three and a half. Oh, mm -hmm. we put the first farmlands first. Uh, uh, um, fertilizer plant in here, and then we farm line. We put in our big service station there too, about a three Ooh. or four base service station, and then things just you know, as I don't know how they do it. They somebody comes along and sells somebody sells them a little bill of goods. We had a, a place downtown, four bays, close to the grocery store, close to the bar, close to the bank, close to everything. Well, they thought they ought to get on the on the on the highway. They bought another guy out, and he was tickled to death. And that didn't last no time. And then they built, they went over and got this other place. And then pretty quick, that's going. And Southwest Green got that. And it's, it's our our co-op just went to hell. That's that long, long and short of it. Um. What kind of advice would you give someone today who is interested in maybe getting involved in the in cooperatives? If if, some, if somebody came to you and wondered what you thought about it, well, I get. I suppose I'm from the old school. Uh, nobody believes in service anymore. You can't go any place and get. There's in Hedinger you can. Hedinger has a Senex station up there that you could go in and get full service, and they don't charge you anymore either. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's about the only one, probably Scranton. I would guess Scranton has. I haven't been to Scranton's about mm -hmm. 70 miles there. I don't get up there. I used to know all those guys pretty much. Yeah. But uh, 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 nobody gives any service. That's what irks me is when you see a lady go in and want to fill the car with gas and there's nobody there to do it, Nobody there to clean the windshield or not, or do any pump a little, put a little air in the tires or do anything like that. You know, we we always tried to give them some service, whether it was in the elevator or the oil station or wherever it was. Mm -hmm. And and uh, and I don't know how I don't it don't look to me like they're ever going to be able to. Uh, if you don't pay and play, you don't play. That's about the way it goes. If you. If you haven't got a credit card, you ain't going to get nothing. And yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I don't know where it's going. Are you? Uh, would you describe yourself as an optimist or a pessimist? Look into the future. I guess I don't know what I am really because uh, things don't. It looks pretty t dull to me. The big get bigger and the small get smaller, and I don't know what's going to happen. It, uh, if our government and everything, uh, if we ran our business when we were running the business like the government and everybody else runs theirs, uh, we'd have been gone a long time ago. Yeah. You ju it, ju it, ju it just won't work. But uh, I. Uh, they say we got the say, but uh, I don't know if we have. I don't think we have. That's my personal opinion. But uh, I think we're. We talk about uh, dictators. I think we've got them right now. Quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. That's my personal opinion. Okay. Anything else you'd like to talk about that I didn't ask you? Well, really, really not too much. Uh, I feel like uh, sometimes that a guy. He worked his butt off to, for co-ops and stuff, and then uh, maybe we got, uh, I don't know whether, whether we got, what happened to us, to, whether we got double-crossed. Somebody maybe was a little smarter than we were, see, they just 
<laughs> it seemed to me like, you know, later years, when our co-ops got bigger, somebody come in and moved out and hired high thinkers from other big organizations, and pretty quickly that changed the whole picture again. They, 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 they've changed it, I think, to a certain extent. Uh, I don't think our co-op is, is anything like it was when I started or all the years I worked in there, but mm -hmm. what I think don't make much difference anymore, but uh, it, it's, it's uh, you kind of hate to see it. Our, uh, our electric, co-op electrics are working pretty good yet, it seems like, mm -hmm. but I think the day will come along that uh, they'll bring a hammer on them just like they did on everything else. And the, boys with the big money or the politicians will uh, dictate what's going to happen and then church will be out for them too. They'll legislate them out of business. Maybe I'm wrong. but hmm. <laughs> We've been visiting with Elmo Kane. Thank you for participating in the Cooperative Legacy Project. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to do what little I did. I, that I know that I've missed a lot during this uh, session here because uh, there's so many things the guy gets into over the years and then they kind of slip by. But working for co-ops and working with young people and dedicated uh, 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 customers is... is uh, I'll always be, that's my legacy, I guess. I, I'm tickled to death to, I don't think I ever made too many enemies. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>